Bagua Zhang, one of the main branches of internal Chinese martial arts, is known for its use of evasive footwork, dragon-like body motions, and powerful palm strikes. Most modern forms of Bagua Zhang trace their origins back to Dung Hai Chuan. Although Dung is recognized as the founder, various branches of his art have evolved. One of the most well-known styles was taught by one of Dung's top students, Chen Tinghua. The material on this tape is representative of the Gao Sheng system of Bagua Zhang, which is a branch of the Chen Tinghua style. The characteristic of the Gao system, which sets it apart from other branches of the Chen Tinghua style, is its division of the art into pre-heaven and post-heaven methods. Pre-heaven Bagua includes the familiar circle walking and palm change practice, which is the foundation of the art. Post-heaven Bagua consists of combat forms derived from the motions and energies of the pre-heaven circular changes. The pre-heaven set consists of the single palm change and eight additional palm changes. Each pre-heaven palm change on the circle corresponds with eight straight line post-heaven combat forms. When practicing, the single palm change in each of the eight pre-heaven palm changes can be performed with fixed steps, linked steps, or continuous steps. At the basic level, one practices the fixed steps to train correct alignment, posture, balance, and power. Each step of the movement is clearly defined. The focus of this practice is to move smoothly, develop root, and integrate the body and mind. Progress at this level is attained through detailed body movement combined with proper mental focus. The form should never be practiced in a casual manner. The mind should permeate all of the movements in Bagua Zhang. Lord Asho is now demonstrating the single palm change fixed step practice. In low school, students will practice the fixed step method for a considerable amount of time in order to develop proper alignments and train the body to develop a full body integrated power in the execution of each movement. The next level of training is to perform the pre-heaven changes in a continuously linked manner as Law is now demonstrating. This is called the linked steps level of training. This type of training teaches the student how to maintain correct posture and balance while changing smoothly and continuously throughout the form. While the movements at the fixed step level were meticulous and step by step, the movements at the linked step level continuously flow together and the form becomes seamless. Feeling relaxed and comfortable while remaining smooth and fluid in motion is the priority. In the fixed step practice, the root of the power is apparent in each individual movement, and each movement is clearly defined. In the linked step practice, the practitioner works to connect all movements so the power is consistently available. There are no movements in which the expression of power appears obvious, and there are no movements which lack power. The Bagua Zhang practitioner strives to be aware of all parts of his body simultaneously while executing his form. Law suggests that when practicing, one should maintain the image of feeling a constant, evenly distributed pressure on all areas of the body as if walking in water. Advanced level pre-heaven Bagua is called the swimming body form. At this level, the student flows spontaneously from one form to another without break in momentum or steps as Law is now demonstrating. At this level, the practitioner becomes creative in the timing and articulation of the movements. The upper and lower body are continuously moving and changing. The rhythm and tempo of the movements and the manner in which the body movements are coordinated with the footwork are variable and spontaneous at this level. The practitioner takes the principles of change which are inherent in the I Ching and applies them to the physical form. The mind is creating the movement spontaneously and thus the form becomes very expansive. 
In a fighting situation, the ability to take the fundamental principles based on the form movements and vary them to fit any situation is a key to success. The swimming body form training aids in developing this process. The purpose of the straight line post-heaven forms is to train the skills of the pre-heaven practice for use in actual combat. Each form is a prototype technique which can be varied to meet changing situations. These forms teach the student how to connect with the opponent, obtain an advantageous position, and issue power. The forms may be practiced one at a time in a repetitive movements for power or linked together in a continuous form to develop the ability to change smoothly from one technique to another. Lowell is now demonstrating the repetitive forms. Due to the lack of space, he is only demonstrating one or two repetitions. However, in actual practice, the practitioner will perform many repetitions of one form consecutively. These sets are performed with the body long and extended in order to develop full body power. Lowell is now demonstrating the linked post-heaven set. In this set, the 64 post-heaven techniques are linked together one following after another in succession. The link set develops the ability to apply the techniques in a rapid combination during combat. This solo link set is followed by two person sets based on the post heaven movements. After the student has a good foundation in the basic skills of both the pre-heaven and post-heaven practice, two-person combat drills are introduced. These drills are based on the movements of the solo forms and begin to teach the student how to apply the skills he has developed to a combat situation. Both the pre-heaven and post-heaven forms have their counterpart in two-person practice. What you are seeing now is a fixed step two-person combat drill which begins to train correct reflexive response to specific combat situations. This is just one of many two-person practice sets which prepare the practitioner to transition to advanced level less structured sets. Now you are watching an advanced level, less structured free flow of techniques. In addition to the standard solo and two person forms, Gaoi Sheng's system contains various supplementary exercises which develop the whole body power, balance, speed, and coordination. These attributes are vital to development in martial arts and will also be covered in this video. Gao Yisheng was originally from Shandong province and studied his Bagua Zhang from Chen Tinghua's student Zhou Xiang. Gao also had the opportunity to, to study directly with Chen Tinghua in Beijing. Later Gao taught his Bagua Zhang to Zhang Junfeng in Tianjin. During the late 1940s, Zhang Junfeng moved to Taiwan and taught Gao's Bagua for many years. One of his first disciples in Taiwan was Hong Yisheng. In the 1960s, Hong Yisheng opened one of the largest and most successful internal martial arts schools in Taiwan and taught for several decades. Luo De Shou was one of Hong Yisheng's top students during the 1970s. Luo also spent many years researching Gao Yisheng's Bagua with other of Zhang Junfeng's senior students. Additionally, Luo De Shou studied Bagua Zhang with Liu Jian in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Liu Jian had been a student of Sun Shi Kun in Tianjin, China. Sun Shi Kun studied Ba Guazhang with Chen Tinghua's son, Chang Yu Long. Through his intense research, Luo was able to obtain a unique perspective 
into the Bagua Zhang fighting art as taught by the Chun Ting Hua family of practitioners. Lord Xiao presently teaches the internal martial arts and related health practices in Taipei, Taiwan. In this videotape, Luo will demonstrate some of the basic supplementary hand, body, and stepping exercises, palm changes, combat forms, and two-person sets, which will provide the foundation for using Bagua Zhang as a combat art. In addition, Luo will also explain and demonstrate the Bagua Zhang theory of combat application and teach a variety of combat techniques. The combat techniques in this video were chosen to be representative of the fighting principles employed in Bagua Zhang. Since Bagua Zhang is not a system of techniques as much as it is a conceptual framework with which manifests change, an understanding of the principles which each technique demonstrates will help the practitioner learn how a combat situation is approached in Bagua Zhang. The first set of exercises are a sample of various basic training sets from the Gao Yisheng system. The purpose is to drill and refine neuromuscular spontaneity through repeated technique practice. These movements should be repeated many times to ensure correct body mechanics and create the roots of Nei Jing or internal power. The first three exercises are selected from a set of eight basic hand techniques. These three movements are particularly relevant to the techniques and skills presented in this tape. The first technique is Tuanjang, or piercing palm. It includes the four basic movements of internal boxing, namely rise, drill, fall, and overturn. These movements are basic to all others. The movement should be performed slowly and smoothly with the focus of the intent on the movement. The body should remain relaxed. This movement is included in the majority of Bagua techniques. Be sure to move the palms along the center line of the body. The power is generated from the legs and turning of the waist, not the strength of the arms. Be sure to coordinate the movement of the hands so that the pulling back of the forward hand initiates the forward piercing of the back hand. Students may also practice the piercing palm technique in a variety of partner exercises as Law and his student Tim Cartmel now demonstrate. In this exercise, pull the partner's arm down 45 degrees to the rear. Be sure not to lift the shoulder or the elbow when pulling. Although this is a one count technique, the practitioner does not simply grab the opponent's arm and pull. In proper execution of this technique, the rise, drill, fall and overturn components should all be expressed in the one count application. Law and Tim will now demonstrate a variation of this drill. Here the opponent's arm is pulled from the inside. Again, be sure to pull down and out at a 45 degree angle to off balance the opponent. Note that Law's arm does not bend at the elbow when he is pulling. He uses the strength of his legs and torso in executing the movement. Later, these same two-person drills will be practiced in conjunction with stepping techniques. The second basic pong movement is Kai Guo Jing, or wrapping in and opening out. This exercise trains the fundamental power used in the chopping technique demonstrated later in the section on opening and connecting with the opponent. When practicing this exercise, be sure to move the body as an entire unit. The wrapping hand moves inside of the back arm. When opening out, be sure to use power equally in both hands. Be sure the closing and opening is performed as one motion to make use of the body's momentum. Do not allow the chest to stick out when the hands are separated, and do not allow the hands to move back beyond the plane of the shoulders. The chest should be relaxed and the arms slightly rounded. When the arms are separated, 
There should be strength in both arms, such that if the arms do not collapse, if someone were to press in on both hands simultaneously. Laura will now demonstrate a Kai Guo Jing two-partner drill. This movement is identical to the opening technique taught later in this video. Use the forward hand to check inside the opponent's wrist. Bring the back hand from underneath to continue checking the wrist as you chop. If the opponent reaches up to block the first chop, execute the technique again, clearing his blocking hand away and chopping one more time. This technique may be performed to the inside or the outside. When practicing, ensure the elbow and shoulder sink down and the chop is executed by springing off the opponent's blocking hand. Do not pull the arm back in order to chop. The technique continually moves forward. When executing the chop, change the angle of your body in relationship to your opponent in order to gain maximum advantage. Laura is now demonstrating the chopping technique to the outside. Note that as the chopping hand attacks, the backhand hooks and pulls the opponent's wrist to off-balance him, and Lowell steps out to a 45-degree angle to obtain the optimum position. The third basic hand technique is Tui Pai, or Forward Palm Strike. This technique is also presented in the section on opening and connecting with the opponent. When practicing this exercise, be sure to keep the shoulders down and sink the elbows. The focus is on the base of the palm. This exercise trains the basic Forward Palm Strike. Do not stick out the chest or pull back the shoulders. As the palm strikes forward, there is a feeling of squeezing a ball between the forearms. As before, the power is generated from the legs and turning of the torso, not the strength of the arms. The torso moves as a single unit with the hips and shoulders remaining aligned. Laura will now demonstrate a Tui Pai two-partner drill. When executing this drill, be sure to slide along the top of the partner's arm, sticking without breaking contact. The non-striking hand makes contact with the opponent's elbow to trap the opponent's arm and guard against counter-attack. The following exercises are taken from a set known as Tian Gan, or Heavenly Stems. The first exercise is called Ban, or Moving. Take a very wide stance and squat with your back straight. 
Fold one arm and place it behind your lower back and extend the other arm straight out. Bring the focus of your mind all the way to the tips of your fingers. The arm moves only in conjunction with the body and legs in a large circle. The coccyx remains in a relatively the same place while the spine rotates from side to side. This exercise trains strength and flexibility in the area of the inner thighs, hips, and waist. After a number of repetitions, reverse the direction. The eyes follow the movement of the hand. During the downward movement, imagine the fingertips pressing down against a slight resistance in order to help bring the intuition all the way to the fingertips. As a variation of this exercise, one can reverse the circle and move the extended hand in the opposite direction. Move the body as one piece and concentrate on the fingertips in order to bring the intention to the fingers. Practice of this exercise will greatly strengthen the legs and torso and increase the unified power of the entire body as well as the ability to focus the intent. The next exercise is called Tiao, or to pluck up. Touch the five fingers together and extend the arm to the front. Lift the back of the wrist straight up overhead and continue the motion bending backwards. Open the hand and keeping the back straight, bend forward pressing down with the palm. Be sure the intent reaches to the ends of the fingers. As one hand plucks up, the other hand presses downward with equal force. Inhale and exhale in coordination with the movement. Do not hold the breath. In training any internal martial art, it is important not to neglect basic standing practice. Stance keeping trains correct alignment of the body and focus of the mind. This posture is known as Santi Shur and is the basic combat stance of internal boxing. The Gao Yisheng system, this is the standard post-heaven stance. When practicing, be sure to keep the back straight, the shoulders relaxed, the elbows down, and 60% of the weight on the rear leg. Your intent should fill your entire body and the eyes are focused on the index finger of the forward hand. Breathe slowly, smoothly, and silently into the abdomen. The mind should be calm and the body relaxed. Although circle walking is the basis of Bagua Zhang footwork, Separate footwork drills must be practiced if one wishes to use Bagua as a combat art. The first and most basic step is the forward advance with the half follow-up step. The center of gravity is slightly toward the rear leg. Sink the weight onto the back foot and move the front foot a step forward. You should have the feeling as if you are about to kneel on the rear leg as it springs your body forward. After the forward movement, bring your back foot up a half step in preparation for the next advance. Be sure not to hop. The drive of the back leg is translated into horizontal, not vertical motion. This provides the power for whatever strike you choose to execute. Repeated practice of this step is necessary if one wishes to develop the ability to have power, which is initiated in the legs, to be expressed in the hands when executing a frontal attack. This next drill combines the forward advance with the retreating step. After completing the forward step, raise the back foot and pushing off the front foot, move the body back a step. Then withdraw the front foot a half step once again, returning to the ready stance. 
Repeated practice of the forward advance and retreating step in combination will allow one to develop the ability to absorb an opponent's frontal attack with the retreat and swiftly counter attack. The next step is very important in training one to move to an angle. It is called the seven star step. This step moves in a zigzag pattern as the body changes directions 45 degrees with each step. As you change the angle, change leading hands by coordinating the hands with the feet so that the same hand and foot are forward. Turn around by making a large toe-in step with the front foot. Let us now demonstrating the seven star step slowly. The front foot is moved forward and toe in slightly. The rear foot is brought up beside the front foot and then continues moving a step forward while the weight is kept on the rear foot. Now move forward with a basic forward advance step. This is an example of the seven star step with a forward palm strike. Many hand techniques can be used to match this footwork. The final basic footwork drill is called the back cross step. Shift the weight until the center of gravity is over the front foot. Turn the waist toward the rear and back cross step forward with the rear foot. Then shift the center of gravity and step forward again with the front foot. In two person footwork drills, you and your partner face each other. One advances while the other retreats. Match each other's movement, maintaining the same distance. Occasionally, one of you can steal the timing by suddenly reversing directions to strike. In the next example, use the advanced step to obtain a superior angle. Catch the correct timing, moving when the opponent is committing to motion and unable to change. Next, the retreat step is shown in combination with raising and lowering the body. Now the forward advance is used in combination with catching the opponent's wrist. The opponent's arm is pulled outside and down, destroying his balance. This move can be executed to the inside or the outside. The following are examples of obtaining a superior position using the seven star step to both the inside and outside. Finally, the back cross step is applied to the outside with a chopping attack and to the inside with a throw. What we are seeing now is the basic circle walking and single palm change practice of Gaoyisheng Bagua Zhang. The circle walking and palm change practice is the foundation of most Bagua styles. These movements include all of the basic skills, strategies, and energies essential for combat. Walking the circle and performing various palm changes trains proper posture, balance, correct sequences of movement, as well as the ability to change directions rapidly during a fight. All of these are essential prerequisites to Bagua combat. The changes seen here are all variations of the single palm change from the pre-heaven method of the Gaoyisheng school. Lo is now demonstrating the standard single palm change initiated with a toe-in step. Be sure to turn the stepping leg from the hip, maintain a constant height, keep the weight centered over the legs, and link the movements together with a smooth, uninterrupted flow of power. The single palm change includes all of the basic genes or energies found in the Bagua art. Each of the techniques and theories presented in this tape are directly related to the single palm change, and its basic variations will be shown. This next single palm change is also initiated with a toe-in step but with the rear foot moving away from the circle. Notice that Law's stepping is smooth and light, 
and his body does not bob up and down or wobble back and forth when executing his steps. The next two palm changes are identical to the first two, but are performed with continuous steps with no break in the body's motion. This is a more advanced version which links together the body and hand movements with continuous steps. Continuous movement and continuous change are characteristic of Bagua Zhang. The next single palm change is initiated with a toe-in step toward the center of the circle but is executed long and low. The single palm change can be varied in almost countless number of changes. The variations go from left to right, high to low, big to small, inside to outside, from complex to simple, from center to eight directions and their opposites. Almost all of the movements of Gaoi Sheng pre-heaven form are simply variations and combinations of the single palm change movement. The next single palm change in, is initiated away from the circle and is again performed long and low. Most of the low extended postures are used to, in Bagua to train throwing techniques. In actual application, the practitioner will not scoop down so low. However, executing low postures in practice will build strength in the legs, balance and coordination necessary for the throwing skills. Final single palm changes are performed with the long and extended postures in a continuous motion. As stated previously, all of Bagua's techniques are first practiced in a step-by-step -step manner and then later practiced as a continuously linked movement. Although there are other variations of the single palm change, those just shown are the basic variations and are the foundation of Bagua art. All movements of Bagua Zhang are rooted in the single palm change. is now demonstrating how the basic movements of the single palm change translate into combat motion. Each and every movement in Bagua Zhang has a practical application. This is an example of how the beginning form movement is used to issue power. In this section, Lo will show the single palm change followed by the later heaven form equivalent and a sample application. Here Lo is showing an application of the opening movement of the single palm change. Here, the outward movement of the single palm change, when made smaller, becomes the combat form of kai, or to open. The philosophy of Bagua implies the potential and ability for change. Notice how this sequence, the circular single palm change ending movement, becomes smaller and smaller, so that the final expression is very compact. Law now demonstrates the post-heaven linear form of Kai. This is an application of the Kai technique.
Next wall demonstrates how the turning and advancing movement of the single palm change, when performed linearly, becomes the combat form of pung, or to uplift. Law now shows the linear form of pung. This is an application of pung. When the single palm change movement becomes large and extended and moves from high to low, the practitioner creates the combat form tuan, to lower. This is the linear form of Dun from the post heaven set. Law now demonstrates an application of Dun. In the final example, when the single palm change turning movement changes from high to low, we have the combat form Li, to erect, a downward chopping attack. This is the linear form of Li. now demonstrates an application of Li. These first four forms of the post heaven Bagua clearly illustrate how the single palm change translates into practical application. In this section, Lo will demonstrate movements used in closing the distance with the opponent and obtaining an advantageous position. The first opening technique is called chopping. The forward hand checks inside the opponent's wrist. The back hand comes underneath to continue checking the wrist as you move in with a forward advance step and chop. If the opponent blocks, execute the technique again. If the opponent retreats to avoid the chop, catch his wrist and kick. The second opening attacks from the outside with a forward palm strike. Use the forward hand to grab around the outside of the opponent's wrist and pull down slightly. Then move the body forward and use your back hand to check the opponent's elbow as your front hand strikes straight forward to the opponent's face. If the opponent blocks, simply pull down on his hand and strike to his face again. Here the chopping is applied from the outside line in response to a straight punch. If the opponent blocks, pull his blocking hand across and down and strike to the back of his neck. Here the forward palm strike is applied off a punch. If the opponent retreats and blocks, follow up with a backhand blow, staying on the opponent's outside angle. Finally, this is an example of how possible counter to the forward palm strike technique. This is to remind the student that any technique may be countered once the student grasps the nature of continuous change. These openings should be drilled many times, both with the opponent standing stationary and then attacking you until they can be performed smoothly with the proper timing and proper angle. The best technique in the world is useless unless one obtains superior position prior to the technique's application. If the opponent does not block the first opening attack, you hit him. 
If he does block the first technique, you always continue and change in response to the force of the opponent's block and counter with another attack, as shown. The manner in which you respond to an opponent follows the principle of give him more. When the opponent moves or resists your attack, you change directions and add to his movement or force and give him more of what he wants, as shown in the examples you are now watching. One of the strong points of Bagua is its ability to strike with while in motion. Here Lowell demonstrates the basic circles of Bagua and their strategic applications. In the first example, the opponent is the center of the circle and you move around the perimeter to obtain a superior position. The next example is the same, with the direction on the circle reversed. In this example, your center of gravity at the hips becomes the center of the circle as your body and leg rotate backwards for a kick and then forward for a strike rotating on a vertical plane. In this example, your body is the center of the circle and your hand moves on the perimeter in an oblique angle. Notice how easy it is to break the opponent's balance when his hand is moved both downward at an angle simultaneously. Finally, your body is the center of the circle and your opponent is moved around the perimeter, first one way and then suddenly the direction is reversed, greatly adding to the force of your strike. This is a very often used jing or energy found in Bagua. In the applications of Chinna, the circles are made smaller, utilize whole body movement, and are directed at weak points of the opponent's body. Here Lowell breaks the opponent's grasp by rotating his body around its center axis and stepping forward. Here, Lowell uses the vertical circle to break the opponent's grasp. Here, Lowell uses a spiraling motion similar to the technique Kai shown previously. Multiple circles can be employed to divide the opponent's attention. Here Lowell gains the opponent's attention with a strike and then applies a locking technique. These techniques bring together the various skills presented in this tape, including the energies of the single palm change, combat footwork, the opening techniques, and the circle theory of combat. First low shows a simple angle change with a palm strike. Next we see the principle of drawing a reaction to set up a strike. Next we have retreating to lead the opponent into a strike. This is a technique which uses the vertical circle. This technique displays chopping to the outside. Now Lowell follows up after the opponent blocks the previous technique. demonstrates a technique where the opponent is the center and you move around that center. This is a straight palm strike followed by a chopping attack. This technique demonstrates circling on the inside to move the opponent in one direction and then swiftly changing directions to attack. Next we'll demonstrate the use of the Kobu step in locking the opponent's leg both to the inside and to the outside.
This section of the tape will introduce the basic two-person combat drills of Bagua. The students should have reached some level of proficiency before practicing these two-person drills. The practice of two-person drills is a vital and necessary intermediary step between solo practice and free fighting. Two-person drills and set and structured in the beginning stages to ensure correct responses and in order to build appropriate reflex reactions. We start with the two-person circle walking single palm change exercise. This drill teaches the student to focus on the opponent, continuously searching for an advantageous position. It also begins to train the student to change as circumstances demand. As most Bagua techniques are executed while the practitioner is in motion, the skills developed here are essential basics for combat training and are the very reason for the walking the circle practice. Be sure to walk smoothly, focus on the partner's eyes, and match each other's movements as much as possible. This is an example of a set two-person form. These forms teach appropriate responses to various situations. The student learns how to make appropriate angle changes and drills in correct response. This is just one of many two-person sets which aid in the development of intermediary skills which lead to free sparring practice. prepares the arms for contact and trains the correct alignment and posture of the body. Most styles of martial arts have similar training methods. The Bagua variation emphasizes the twisting of the arms and turning of the body. One should pay attention to the twisting of the arms at the point of contact and not on striking as hard as possible. This is an example of a less structured combat drill, which is a free-flowing exchange of techniques. In this videotape, Lord Scholl has demonstrated some of the basic supplementary hand, body, and stepping exercises, palm changes, combat forms, and two-person sets, which provide the foundation for using Bagua Zhang as a combat art. In addition, Lowell has demonstrated the Bagua theory of combat application and taught a variety of combat techniques. The combat techniques in this video were chosen to be representative of the fighting principles employed in Bagua Zhang. Since Bagua Zhang is not a system of techniques as much as it is a conceptual framework which manifests change, an understanding of the principles which each technique demonstrates will help the practitioner learn how a combat situation is approached in Bagua Zhang. Using this video as a primer, one can further investigate Bagua's application of footwork, whole body movement, angles of attack, and variations of the standard Bagua techniques such as single palm change. Additionally, the techniques of connecting with the opponent and penetrating his defenses and the principles used in continuing an attack, such as drawing a reaction from the opponent to set up a technique, or giving the opponent more of what he wants by adding to his force to defeat him, can be further explored using the techniques shown on this video as a template. <laughs>